Caldwell from Nastasia.com. Today I'm going to show you how to crochet a chain shawl called the Flower of Life. This pattern is based upon the geometrical figure known since ancient times. This is a more advanced and intricate pattern, so please be sure to download the written instructions from my website, Nastasia.com. To do this, you'll need some lightweight yarn and a size F hook. I'm going to show you diagrams before we do each row in the hopes that it might help out a bit. To begin, we're going to do a slip knot, then chain four. Slip stitch to form a loop. Next, chain 15. And then slip stitch into the middle of the ring. Do another set of 15 chains and slip stitch into the middle of the ring. Adjust the loops to fit if needed. Do another set of 15 chains. And then slip stitch to the middle of the ring. We're going to do a fourth set of chain 15s and slip stitch to the middle of the ring. And now we'll do the final and fifth set of chain 15s for this row. And we'll slip stitch to the middle of the ring. Now we'll begin row 2. Be sure to refer to this diagram if you get stuck. Chain 1 and turn your work. Now we're going to slip stitch up the one side of the loop. It doesn't have to be perfect, we just need to get to the center of this loop. Now that we're at the center of the loop, chain 15. Once done, we need to slip stitch into the top of that loop stitch. Take note of where I'm inserting my hook. Now, we'll do yet another set of chain 15s and slip stitch to the place we slip stitched before. Now we're going to chain 5 to help us get over to the next loop. To easily find the center of the loop, stick your hook in the hole and pull upwards. When you find the top, do a slip stitch into the top chain. And we're going to chain 15 again and slip stitch into the same slip stitch as before. Do a chain 15 again and slip stitch into that very same slip stitch as before. Your work should look something like this. I promise after several rows it will straighten out and lay flatter. We need to chain 5 again to get over to the center loop. Find the center of your loop and slip stitch into it. This middle loop is an important loop because we will always be doing 3 sets of chain 15 loops on top of it. So here is the first set chain 15. Slip stitch into the same slip stitch as before. Do the second set of chain 15s and slip stitch into the same stitch. And now do the third set of chain 15s and slip stitch into the same stitch. Because this center loop is important, I like to mark the middle of the three loops with a paper clip. This marked middle loop will get three loops on top of it in the next row. 
chain 5 to get over to the next loop. Slip stitch to the top of that loop. Chain 15 again. Slip stitch into the slip stitch. Chain 15 again to create the second loop. And slip stitch into the slip stitch. Chain 5 to get over to the last loop. And slip stitch into the top of the last loop. Here is the first set of chain 15 loops. The slip stitch. And then the second set of chain 15 loops. And the final slip stitch for that row. Here is what the shawl looks like thus far. Now we're moving on to row 3. As always at the beginning of each row, chain 1 and slip stitch along the one side of the loop. Once you reach the top, chain 15 and slip stitch into the same slip stitch. Since this is the first loop of the row, we're going to put a second set of chain 15s in it. And then slip stitch to the slip stitch. From now on, when we need to chain to get to the next loop, it will always be chain 7. So we're going to chain 7 now. Next, we're going to slip stitch the next two loops together. Pierce the first loop, then grab the second and pierce that loop on top as well. And then complete your slip stitch. Chain 15. Slip stitch into the slip stitch. Chain 15. Slip stitch into the slip stitch. Chain 7 to move on to the next loops. We're going to slip stitch to combine the next loops together. Then chain 15 to create the first loop on top. Slip stitch to the slip stitch. Chain 15 to create the second loop on top. Slip stitch to the slip stitch. Chain 7 to move over to the middle single loop. Take out your stitch marker and slip stitch to the top middle of this loop. Chain 15 and slip stitch to create the first loop on top. Chain 15 and slip stitch to create the second loop on top. Chain 15 and slip stitch to create the third loop on top. Put your stitch marker or paper clip in the second or middle of those three loops. 
Here's what this row looks like thus far. Just a reminder, this is a more advanced pattern, so it is a bit complicated. Chain 7 to get over to the next set of loops. Pierce the next two loops on top and slip stitch them together. Chain 15 and slip stitch to create the first loop. Then chain 15 and slip stitch to create the second loop. Chain 7 to move over to the next set of loops. Pierce the next two loops on top and slip stitch them together. Chain 15 and slip stitch once. Then chain 15 and slip stitch a second time. Chain 7 to move over to the last loop. Slip stitch into the top of this last loop and do two sets of chain 15s and slip stitches. Here is what your shawl should look like. I'm going to show you how to approach the remaining rows. All first loops will have two sets of chain 15s on top of them. Then you will chain 7 to move on to the next loops. Then combine the next two loops into one. And do two sets of chain 15s on top of them. Chain 7 again to move on to the next loops. Then combine the next two loops into one and do two sets of chain 15s on top of them. Chain 7 again to move on to the next loops. Then combine the next two loops into one and do two sets of chain 15s on top of them. Then chain 7 to move on to the middle loop. On top of all middle loops, you will do three sets of chain 15s. Chain 7 again to move on to the next loops. Then combine the next two loops into one. And do two sets of chain 15s on top of them. Chain 7 again to move on to the next loops. Then combine the next two loops into one and do two sets of chain 15s on top of them. Chain 7 again to move on to the next loops. Then combine the next two loops into one and do two sets of chain 15s on top of them. Chain 7 again to move on to the last loop. On the top of all last single loops, you'll do two sets of chain 15s. Once you repeat the rows until the length you desire, you can add some fringe on if you wish. I like to use the loops themselves to attach the fringe. The fringe adds a nice decorative edging, plus it adds some weight so it will help keep the shawl's shape. I do like to block my shawl a bit with a medium heat iron and a wet washcloth. Always test on a sample square or an inconspicuous part so you do not ruin your shawl. I like to place this wrung out washcloth on my item and with the medium iron, I like to give it a few quick press downs, keeping down for just a split second, just enough to give it some steam. You can use this method on most fibers, however, please test it out first with a sample just in case. 
I hope this video has helped you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website at nastasia.com for more tips and tricks on creative, self-sufficient living.